Good morning and thank you for joining us for another review of the headlines in the papers this morning. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I'm joined by two very enlightened Nigerians talking about Liboris Oshoma in the studio. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. And we're joined virtually by Aisha Asori, Public Affairs Analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we'll start with a punch newspaper this morning. Um, Aisha's ADC escort commander, riot cops, may face panel this week. Security breach to top IG management teams meeting today. And then we have DSS operatives attached to Buhari's nephew fired shots. That's according uh, to sources. Uh, we have all the headlines here. Uh, There's a picture not too good. Uh, one dies, two missing as car plunges into Quara River. That's the sad looking picture on your screen now. Okay. Other headlines, just beneath that. No punishment too severe for rapists. That's Adeboye. Nigeria crosses 16,000 mark. Gombe tops with 73 COVID 19 cases. Lagos woman allegedly assaulted by expatriate lover cries for help. Buhari orders condole with Igodalo as wife dies. If you go to the top of the paper now, you will see APC govs to meet Buhari. Obasaki consults Wike Akwaibom governor. Soldiers who rescued kidnapped Kingpin Wadumi attacked us with machine gun. That's uh, policemen speaking where they are at the time. Now, let me start with you, um, Aisha. What's uh, your reaction to the situation at the presidency with gunshots and all of that? <laughs> um, to be honest, my, my honest reaction is just one of exhaustion. The country is under a heightened state of insecurity. I am more concerned with the over 69 people that were killed in Gubio last week. I mean, I saw a video, obviously, with these things, you can't be sure what you're watching. It's, it's not verified, but I respect the platform in which I saw them, where there were just dead bodies all over the floor. People are crying out for insecurity from Katsina to, to Borno to Yobe. I mean, and then this this shenanigans are happening in the, in the presidency. It, for me, honestly, just shows a lack of discipline it shows a lack of organization. It shows a lack of decorum. It shows a lack of respect for Nigerians because this is not the time. In addition to the economic crisis, in addition to COVID, in addition to the rising insecurity, in addition to the, re the reports we got a few weeks ago that kidnapping is a $20 million business in Nigeria, in addition to all those things, we have to contend with drama and indiscipline from the presidency. So for me, honestly, it's just a huge shame it's one more thing that Nigerians should be asking themselves as we go to the polls, whether it's in Ondo and Edo in a few months, or whether we go to the polls again in 2023. What exactly do we expect from our leaders? Do, they, do we expect them to be better than we are? Do we want them to uphold higher standards that we can look up to and emulate? Or do they want us? Do they? Do we want them to be like us? To be honest, I'm just. I, I just find the whole thing this very distasteful. I have nothing more to say on that matter. Is that the sentiment you share? Exactly. Um, you look at the entire country, it's almost as if um, we are a nation at war. If it is not kidnapping, it is, um, you know, um, Boko Haram. It's either the army has completely decimated Boko Haram uh, members, and then the next day you hear that they are attacking an entire village and, you know, more than 80 something people, you know, dead, house raised down. You know, and then so if you take um, a census, of the numbers of uh, Boko Haram members that the army have killed, you would discover that you know the army probably had killed twice the population of the entire Borno state, and yet, and um, people, uh, members of Boko Haram are still attacking, you know, communities. You hear of uh, kidnapping everywhere. That is so bad that even in states now, police are not safe, commissioners are not safe, and yet, at the villa where you expect sanity. It's sad where you expect sanity, where you expect that, you know, issues like this shouldn't even happen. And then you hear of such sad things. And like Walesho Inka, Professor Walesho Inka said, that it's almost as if there is nobody in charge. 
one would have expected that this issue is nipped in the bud timelessly, but we allow it to fester. It shows, you know, the country that, that the situation we find ourselves in Nigeria, that truly there's nobody in charge. And that when there's nobody in charge, you know, of a, of a, of a ship, a sail in the high sea, that's what it that's that's what happens Everybody okay um actually you talked about it moments ago but i, I want to um uh, talk to you again um on it nigeria from this a punch report has uh, crossed the sixteen thousand mark when it comes to infected people um in this country um if you you know balance that with the rate of recovery and the number of deaths what what do you just think of the entire um a management system, the containment system, in spite of all the plans and all the briefing and all the monies that has been expended, we continue to have cases. And this is because testing has increased. It is because testing has increased. But I've also been thinking about this a little. I said, I think, uh, not to sound like, um, I guess, the hindsight is, is 2020 20 or 50 50, as they say, but maybe we locked down too early. Because the truth is, we locked down in March when in Europe they were getting to their peak and where they were like enforcing strict lockdowns. But we didn't have the numbers at that time. One would have liked to think that we locked down so that we could prepare, you know, so that we could have a plan. We could say we're going to decentralize the NCDC. We're going to make sure that all the 36 states. OK, we could have presumed that we locked down early to plan. It doesn't seem as if we took that time to do the planning that we needed to do. Then we got tired after about six weeks of the lockdown, almost simultaneously as the, as the European countries were also coming out of their lockdown. Meanwhile, we had never reached our peak. They waited till they reached their peak and were sort of plateauing and coming down in terms of recovery infection rates. Then they started reopening slowly. We haven't taken that track. We're just sort of saying, okay, they closed, we closed. Now they're opening, now we're opening. It doesn't seem we, saw, we thought this through. So the truth is, there are probably a lot more people out there that have this symptom. It doesn't help that the WHO2 is not clear on whether people that are asymptomatic, who, who have the virus but are not showing the signs, whether they can infect other people or not. Some days we hear they can, we hear they can't. So there's a lot of confusion with this new disease. One would like to think that we would have spent the six weeks ahead of that we use for the lockdown, six to eight, eight weeks, to prepare more thoroughly, to deploy that money more usefully. The truth is, I've also heard, whether it's off the record or not, whether it can be substantiated by people that maybe have come on your show, the, the medical practitioners, those in NCDC, that when people, these days, people are calling NCDC, and NCDC people are saying, just stay at home, because there's no more space in any of the isolation centers. Yeah, so it seems as if we're just getting to our peak. I mean, that's very worrying. Yeah, th there's been concerns about the, the sufficiency of isolation centers, but I'm yet to hear any report where NCDC is turning people um, away uh, from coming to the isolation center, which confirmed cases. Okay, let's take a look at the nation newspaper and see what is there. Edo, PDP in tight corner over Abasaki's ticket bead. It has a rider, two actually. Governor visits Wike Udom, PDP aspirants. We won't step down for him. Uh, they're inside the paper. You will. Nigeria needs a decentralized response system, says ANAP Foundation Think Tank. Um, more on that for you. And then the accident is also captured on the front page of the nation. Uh, just minute it at Deboye to obey protocol as churches brace for reopening. Catholic Church gets set. Lagos Mosque to remain shot. Uh, that's uh, still on measures to contain the virus. Reps urge federal government to return uh, Sun Navdak to ports. Lagos City cleaners protest. Okay. Um, we have a Godalo's wife again, uh, the lady that um, unfortunately left us at 40. Um, how Itwa Igodala's wife, Ibidum, 40, died. Details inside the paper. Uh, Mali under attack for Abuja performance. Undo deputy governor heads for PDP. Before we talk about the big one here, the Edo PDP, I, wanna, I want your quick input on the matter with uh, Naira Mali and some other celebrity who, in spite of the lockdown, were able to take a private jet 
from Lagos to <laughs> Abuja, and even knowing that they are flouting federal guidelines, Which they federal still guideline? put it on social media Which for everybody guideline? to see. Which federal guideline? Look, it, 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 we, are, we are such a very funny country. In all of this, we are thinking of, I, I just talked about the numbers. We locked down too early, and now we seem to be fatigued. We really don't know what to do. Even the NCDC is complaining that states are not bringing samples enough. And so that's why you see the numbers sometimes as if it's dropping. And you know, there are so many people out there who are still not being tested. In the midst of all of this, we are thinking of we've open markets. We're thinking of opening churches and mocks because we're very religious people, but less godly. And then um, you talk about protocols and just watch once the church is open, if those protocols will be observed. And then, you know, people are organizing shows that are supposed to be drive through. You know, these are protocols. And the private jets didn't take off from my house or their houses. It took off from the airport. So somebody gave clearance, you know, in spite of this lockdown. We've seen even people take private jet to go get married in all of this lockdown to the custom bus did the same thing. So when you have all of this, you know, how do you expect people to take you seriously? And, and, and so that's basically, Naramali is a, re, a reflection of what we have. And I said it last Monday that the attitude of government and the um, people who should be concerned, you know, also gives the impression that COVID-19 is COVID-419. And so that's why a lot of people would say, oh, look, this government, you know, this is not believable. So when you put all of this together, you look at all of our, 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 our efforts so far, vis-a-vis, the steps that we are taking and our push to open up the, the economy and the country and the churches and all the businesses. It, what the only thing, the only answer you get is that, you know, we are truly, you know, a, a bunch of jokers. All right, actually, let's come to you with a big one. Edo, PDP in tight corner over Abasaki's ticket bid. Your thoughts? Uh, we talked about last week, and uh, this is this was expected. I mean, we've all seen those who watch politics and 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 have and have seen the patterns in which both our, our winning parties behave. So this is this this could have happened in PDP as it happened in APC. It's not to excuse anybody, but we knew this was coming. There's been a long running battle between Oshomole and uh, Obaseki for for years. Let's just put it that way. So what it just shows again is just what what governance means to us. What you know, the right optics mean to those who are in powers of position and whether they want to use those positions to signal a sense of discipline and process and transparency. If this man won, for me, I thought about it this way, if this man was okay to run four years ago, why is he, why is it suddenly an issue now? When we, the whole world knows that he has issues with his, the chairman of his party, that this certificate is suddenly not good enough. It was good enough a few years ago. It's suddenly not good enough now. That's one. Two, is it not in our constitution that we say it's okay if you just have school living certificates? I mean, I once tried, attempted to run for primaries. All the degrees in the world, they said it doesn't matter. I must go and bring living, uh, what is it called? Primary school living certificate. So what does it matter actually that whether his NYC certificate says or BASEC or, or back y or, or back z Does it matter if he finished primary school? Is that not what we said in our constitution that that is what is the most important thing to us? So the whole thing is a charade. The whole thing is a farce. Personally, I think more, if we look at the numbers of people who come out to vote during elections, we'll see a steady decline of, you know, there's now voter apathy. There's not much choice between the two major parties. People are exhausted. People are tired. People are now realizing that change was a fraud. There was nothing like change. It was just a, a means to get into office and change one face with another face. So all, all in all, it is extremely disappointing, as usual. Right. Let Libor <laughs> seem to have a different view when it comes to the relevance of the primary school certificate. Yes, um, quickly, before yeah, yeah. I go to that view, um, I, my condolence to um, the I Igodalus family. Really, it's painful. Uh, when I heard the news yesterday, you know, I was, I was shocked. You know, um, but one my only consolation is that the only thing about this life is that nobody will come out of it alive. But we pray to live long enough, you know, to live legacy. And she has left, you know, quite a number of legacies. But that said, my only problem with Obaseki is that, like Asha has said, the requirement is school cert certificate or its equivalent. So knowing fully where that the requirement is school cert certificate, and even the Supreme Court had said you need not even have one credit, just school cert certificate. And so who was he trying to impress by tendering certificates that had discrepancies? That's my problem. 
He should be man enough to know when you are swimming against the tide for the past two years or three years, it's been having running battle with his party, he even attempted to oust his national chairman. You know, you don't you don't draw out your 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 godfathers for a battle, you know, to the point of even, you know, um, killing him politically and then you expect him to give you a pat on the back. He should have been ready, knowing fully well that the PDP made so much issue out of his certificate in 2016, you know, that he did, doesn't have a certificate. And so, all he needed to have done would have been just tender your school sat, leave out the rest that have discrepancies. Okay. Because the moment you tender those certificates, they become an issue. And that was what the Supreme Court said in the case of Baeza. If he didn't tender them, it won't become yeah, a public should. thing. But the moment you put them in public as these are your requirements, these are your qualifications for standing for the office, they are open, it, for, scrutiny. They are open for scrutiny. And that All was right. what the party... So he just he poured fuel on himself and gave the matches to Shomole to light. This day newspaper, I think uh, we have time to quickly look at that. Buhari others probe into state house shooting. President not in harm's way from incident uh, or COVID-19, says presidency. Confirms first lady security aides breached Asorok regulations. And then Obasaki Palace Wike Emmanuel, PDP, NWC, over... Edo governorship uh, ticket. And then just at the top of the paper, we have World Bank with more transparency. FG recovers $3 billion from oil sector. Dangote boosts diversification with made in clinker shipment to Senegal. Man lords exports drive. Those are some of the headlines for you um, in on the front page of this day newspaper. I shall come to you now with... Um, uh, and let you make a, a pick from all of this. But how about this one about, <laughs> okay, I'm not letting you go. I'm just going to give you one. Uh, presidency, not an elder's trade accusation over insecurity. What's your take on that one? I mean, that's one I would have picked anyway, so thank you. <laughs> to, I think that, as usual, we're playing politics with the lives of Nigerians. And at the end of the day, the power elites, I know just, and it's not just, they're not just the elites, because the elites, usually care about uh, enlightened self-interest and understand that when the majority of people are okay, you know, they will be okay. These are the power elites who have been involved in manipulating Nigeria for decades. So they are at it again. This same Ango Abdullahi, when he used to speak against Jonathan, the people in APC thought he was speaking God's, God's word. Now that he's pointing the same finger back at them, suddenly he's irrelevant, he's an irritant, he doesn't have anything to say. But the truth is, you cannot run away from the dead bodies that are climbing every single day. You cannot run away from the videos, from the stories, whether it's from southern Kaduna to what is happening in Gubio, to what is happening in Katsina, to the, just the, the rampant kidnapping and insecurity. You can't run away from all those things. And we would have thought, I think that what is even going on now is that we have a war economy. This war is too lucrative for some people for it to end. The same things that we're hearing about during the Jonathan administration, we're still hearing about it today, maybe just a little less, because somehow the, the, the press and the media are either more compromised or more cowardly, so we're not getting the full story. We have a situation where the heads of the Joint Chiefs of Staff have been the longest serving. They're all due to retire. Meanwhile, they can't be gotten rid of. They cannot be replaced. So for me, that's the larger context in which this sordid pointing and and what is also just additionally, you think that you get about the disappointment in Nigeria, but what is additionally disappointing is that the so-called spokespeople in the in the presidency still haven't learned, even after five years of engaging with us, to be a bit measured, to be a bit reflective, to be able to at least say, you know what, we understand why you're saying this. But their only reaction is to be defensive, to act like attack dogs which we've heard from previous administration that that's what they think their role is. So, you know, good luck to all of us. I just keep coming back to the point that what will citizens do? When will Nigerians say enough is enough of all this nonsense and we want an end to it? For me, that's the most important thing. Let's see what happens. Your, your thoughts quickly. Yes, um, two, two things for me. First is the um, Obaseki and PDP. Um, it is ironical the kind of politics we play here. You know, the rules are switching now. APC called Isaiah Amu a thief in 2016. Today they are promoting him. PDP said Obaseki didn't have a certificate in 2016. Today they are embracing him. And, and so the citizens should know better. That's about interest. Secondly, 
not, not at the mercy of armed gang, not an Eda's lament, says Obase, uh, Buhari governor lost control. It is true, we can't, um, we can't say it loud enough, not just the not. The entire country is at the mercy of gang leaders now because there are no consequences for every action. Not long ago, the Southwest had to set up a security apparatus, Amoteko, and we debated it back and forth. And today, as we speak now, if it is not armed gang leaders, we're talking about Fulani headsmen, we're talking about Boko Haram in the North, we're even talking about community clashes. And now it is so bad that even in Asso Rock, you know? So I, I, I think the government should sit back you know, have a retreat and do a reflection of all of these issues and find a, a, a method to addressing it, even if it's one after the other. But to always see everybody that raised these issues as, um, as an enemy of, of Buhari or, you know, uh, somebody you should be combative with won't solve the problem. And at the end of the day, their name will be written down in the history of this country as people who promised so much more and came and were caught flat-footed and were unable to do anything. I guess that's where we'll wrap things up this morning. Thank you very much, uh, legal practitioner, uh, Libera Sushoma, for coming on the program. And of course, uh, public affairs analyst, Aisha Osori, a pleasure to have you always on the review of the papers. Thank you for inviting me. And that's where we we'll wrap things up this morning. Thank you for your time. I hope uh, they were able to shed some light on the headlines. You do have the responsibility, though, to go read further and see what other angles you can come up with. My name is Felicity Ezewige. I will see you soon enough.